Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, with a great privilege, I want to introduce a colleague and friend of mine, Dr. Kenneth Fong. Dr. Kenneth Fong actually has a very, very long resume. If I go through his resume, it will probably take the next half an hour. But uh, to make it uh, very, very short and sustain, he's one of our most prominent uh, Chinese psychiatrists. He is the head of the... Um... Oh, Dr. Chen is here. Okay. Okay, go with... Well... <laughs> But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Telephone, call. Okay. Telephone first. Sure. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To save time on switching. So it's one of our uh, preeminent uh, psychiatrists in our community. Uh, he is the director of the Asian Initiative in Mental Health Program uh, at the Toronto Western Hospital University Health Network. He just also got promoted to be a, a professor in medicine. Very proud of him. I also have the privilege of working with him uh, in the uh, Chinese Canadian Medical Society as well as the Federation of, uh, uh, of uh, Medical Societies in North America. And um, without further ado, I'm going to pass it on. Uh, just a background information. Uh, he's going to represent the specialist uh, group. And while Dr. Chen will be talking about being a family doctor, those are, those are two large categories we talk about. But in in being a specialist, there's so many of them. I, I'm one, I'm a cardiologist, but I also train at some point being a family doctor myself as well. So we're going to have them dispel the myth of being a physician and how many options that we have in our field. So I always say there's one door that goes into medical school. There's 81 different programs that are coming out that you can pick up. So go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and it's a pleasure for me to be here. Hi, everyone. And thank you, uh, Dr. Chow, for organizing this event and mastering and, and inviting me to be here. So just want to say hello to you. Um, my name is uh, Kenneth Fung, and as introduced, I'm a, a psychiatrist. So um, over the next uh, 15, 20 minutes, maybe I'll share with you a bit about my journey as a psychiatrist. But maybe before I do that, um, Maybe I just want to poll the room. Um, how many of here here are parents? Raise your hands. Okay. Okay, good. And how many of you here are children, I guess? <laughs> children wanting to be something here. Okay, I can see a parent trying to raise the child's hand there. <laughs> okay. So, um, and can you tell me the reason why you're listening to me? Can someone show a reason why you're listening to me? You're laughing. Okay, yes. You want to go to the same field as me? Oh my goodness. <laughs> my first recruit as a psychiatrist, Dr. Chow. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> so so thank you. Uh, and you can come speak to me afterwards. Um, yeah, because we don't actually get a lot of opportunities to dialogue with the public about career. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Chow and myself, we do a lot of public education. And that's good, but it's actually actually not that common that we get to talk to, I guess, the public about what it is like to be a doctor. Even though I think um, people from the Chinese community, I think it's a common thing for parents to say to your children, go be a doctor. Is that still true? Yes? How many would, would say yes? You would say, you know, go be, go be a doctor. You want your children to be doctor. Okay, some. <laughs> Okay, actually not a lot in the room. Well, they don't want to admit it. <laughs> they don't want to admit it. Because uh, it's not always the case, certainly, and it really depends on a lot of factors. Um, I remember actually talking to someone maybe five years back. Um, she was actually telling me that when she was in China, it was the opposite. Like, everyone was saying, don't be a doctor. <laughs> So I just wonder here, when you hear like um, becoming a doctor, what do you people think of? Why would you want to become a doctor? What, you know, why would anybody tell their children to go be a doctor? What's the benefit of it? Dr. Chow said to dispel some myths. Yes. People, people will respect you as a good career. That's, that's good. Making lots of money. Making lots of money. Highly respected. Uh, in my case, when I was young, I was told that you'll get a good looking wife. <laughs> it's true, actually, but that's not related to being a doctor. <laughs> because my wife is here, I have to say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Helping people meaningful life. Yes, that's true. That's very good. 
Yeah. Any any anything else? Any other reason to be a doctor? Yeah. To cure or to repair. That's very that's very good to cure or repair. Chi Ming, you have to remember that. You have to cure people, okay? <laughs> so Always. to cure and to repair, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any anything else? I think we've covered all the bases, right? So I think that um, certainly there are many reasons to go uh, be a doctor. And I guess we're here to share that passion. Um, sometimes there are of um, two minds, I guess. There are some families who are doctors who say to their children, don't be a doctor. <laughs> it's just so hardworking, right? You have to be on call long. <laughs> you have to study very long uh, in school. Um, and um, you can be very busy. Right, so those are there. There are definitely some downsides, but then there are other doctor families, right? I didn't come from a doctor family, so let me tell you a little bit about my story then, about how I became a doctor, and see if it resonates with you. Some of those things of why I became a doctor, and then why I became a psychiatrist, because I'm also representing psychiatry and a specialist. Well, once upon a time, I was a little kid, like some of you here. Um, I, I never went to a career talk. Um, so I kind of uh, didn't exactly know what I wanted to be. I mean, my first ambition was to be, I think, when I was small, like an artist, you know, like drawing and painting. And of course, my parents would say, that's nice as a hobby, <laughs> but that's not really career. <laughs> so they agreed to put me to, you know, take extra art classes on Saturday, Sunday, but just as long as I remember, it's a hobby. Um, so, and then I thought maybe I want to be like a scientist and inventor of something new. And then I found out I wasn't really, I was a, I, I'm pretty smart, but maybe not a genius level. So that's neither here nor there. I thought about computer programming, IT, like, but Chi Ming is half an IT programmer here. So he's actually had a successful software career. I guess the people who are doctors can also have other kind of talents too. But eventually, um, I actually became fascinated myself with psychology, how people think. So that's always been an interest personally of mine. Um, why do people do the things they do? Like, why are you sitting here as opposed to at home, right? And why is this person sitting in this way? Why is that, you know? I have a lot of curiosity about what makes people do the things they do. I think that's kind of curiosity about how people work and how people think, um, but also about how to help people, like someone said, right? So I'm always someone that uh, people tell me their, you know, secrets. Of course, I'm very good at keeping secrets. Um, so I kind of like, like that idea of helping people. And I also remember one of my first inspirations uh, was that I grew up in Hong Kong. I don't know. I, I think I told this story in my professorial lecture, if you're interested. But I remember when I was small, and um, when, uh, anybody can speak Cantonese here? Raise your hand. Maybe some people. Okay. So uh, when I was small in Hong Kong, I listened to a um, Cantonese song by Hoi Gun Ki. Anybody know Hoi Gun Ki? Uh, okay. Only, only a few people <laughs> with a certain older generation who's heard of him. But he had a song that, you know, sang about life and about how sometimes when there are things in life, you have it, you're destined to have it, you'll have it, but sometimes some things are not meant to be and you cannot force it. So I remember those, some of you might know what I'm talking about. So Ming Lu Yao Si, Zhong Sui Yao. Ming Lu Mo Si, Mo Kang Kao. So for that generation, you might remember songs like that. So I was impressed by because he had two categories of songs. One is extremely rude that all the parents say, don't even listen to him. The other category of songs were deeply philosophical. So I asked my you know, dad, like, and first of all, I share a birthday with him. So that's another common thing. I asked my dad, like, why is he so good at songwriting? And he said, well, that's because he took psychology in university. He really understands how people think. And he can really tap into people's hearts. Not only one person, but the whole community. So that really struck me about what it's like to be able to help and repair people, but really to understand and connect with people. Um, 
能够明白个民声、市民嘅心声。So not only individually but also community. I thought that was really amazing. So I had a deep interest in psychology then in high school, and I did various science projects on it, like studying the unconscious. I tried to manipulate my parents through experimental paradigms to see if it worked、uh, to manipulate subconscious. So those who are here who want to manipulate your parents, you know, study psychology. You're going to get what you want. <laughs> I can see some smiles now. <laughs> It's just basic principles and psychology is all out there. So I found it fascinating to be able to understand people, to be able to help people who are deeply distressed. So I did go to、um, med school with psychiatry in mind because、um, here it is a perfect match. My parents said all the reasons you mentioned: go be a doctor. You know, people will respect you. You're not going to starve.、Uh, they were saying that no matter how economy turns, eventually someone will get sick. <laughs> eventually, they're going to need a doctor. So you're going to be never out of a job. So just, there's like people need doctors. People respect doctors.、Um, and、uh, I thought, hey, and I can also maybe become a psychiatrist. So a doctor who understands, who can talk to people in distress. Wouldn't that be amazing? So I went to medical school, and then I became a, psych a psychiatrist.、Um, so、um, I did. So、uh, just to let you know,、uh, back when I was doing it, you only need two years of university, and you can get into med school if your marks are good enough with high MCAT and high marks in university. So I was one of those. I think. I think now it's much harder. Now basically you need like three years. Yeah, I think that was a special expedited pathway through U of T. I think it's much less common that we have now. So at least four years of undergraduate、yeah. before you go to medical school. Yes. So this is what I said earlier about the long road. It's a commitment. It's a commitment. Ten minutes left. Okay. So I I became committed to it and two years of of、uh, undergrad, and I went to med school four years. So four years of medical school. Um, and then at the end of four years, you get to choose what you want to become, and you're going to hear the、uh, the amazing career career path of becoming a family doctor,、uh, which I also consider. I also consider internal medicine.、Um, I actually didn't consider internal medicine before going to medicine because I that wasn't the reason why I went in. But actually, when you start learning about the human body, and、um, you become fascinated with it. I know everyone is nervous about you know having to dissect dead bodies. I mean that was the、um, and not so good smelling part to be honest. But it's really amazing to learn about the human body, how human body functions. So even though I went to med school saying, "Hey, I don't think I care too much about the human body," it's actually very fascinating to be able to also learn about the human body, how to heal, how to repair disease processes, how to prevent illness. Uh, so I did seriously think about、uh, internal medicine. My first choice was U of T psychiatry. Was my second choice was U of T internal medicine. I would have been really happy going into either one,、uh, to be honest. But my first choice was still psychiatry because I share with you my interest in really helping people through、um, psychological issues.、Um, so I told my parents I'm going to be a psychiatrist. And so this is where in the beginning I had. You know, just a little bit of resistance, <laughs>、um, because that's when they said, "Well, but you have to be a real doctor because you spent four years in medical school." A real doctor. I said, "What's a real doctor?" They said, "A cardiologist, like Dr. Chi Ming Chao." <laughs> Because psychiatrist is not a real doctor, and if you talk to crazy people, you become crazy yourself. <laughs> not to mention you, you're going to get hit by one of those crazy people. <laughs> Um, so I have to think a lot about that, like kind of like internal medicine. And my parents really want me to be a doctor. Now I'm going to be a doctor. I'm med school, and now I have a choice. And I got good marks in internal medicine. Actually, I won the internal medicine award for that school year. So、um, I should be an internist. And even within medicine, I rotate through different rotations, and everyone says. You're smart. Why be a psychiatrist? <laughs> if I can understand, if you were just passing med school, go be a psychiatrist. But you know, you got pretty good marks, and of course,、um, there are a lot of messages like that. So, why do you think people are thinking like that?、Any、so, there's a stigma. 
that uh, we have to deal with that uh, these are soft signs, for example? Yeah, so there is mental health stigma. I kind of always knew about it, but it's always interesting to experience that it may also affect why not many people perhaps go into psychiatry. Um, because even though there are lots of Chinese that are going into medicine, there's relatively fewer, not none, I'm not the only, but there are relatively fewer that go into psychiatry, perhaps because people don't want to think about mental health, um, because there's a lot of stigma around it. Um, but luckily, through um, perseverance, I didn't do any manipulation, to be honest, but just perseverance, perseverance and some tears. Um, my parents agree that I can be a psychiatrist. So so the rest is this history because I became a psychiatrist. Um, and um, sometimes I do think, what would life be like if I'm a cardiologist or if I'm another specialist? Um, but I've never regretted my choice. And just like Dr. what Dr. Chow says, you think you're going to go to medicine. Okay, I got the answer now. I'm going to go into medicine. But actually, once you go in, I just said there was a major decision point. I could have been a psychiatrist. I could have been in internal medicine. I could have been a family doctor because that would have been my thought that I would do a little bit of both. You know, I can talk to people, but I can do some, you know, and 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 Dr. Lee is going to tell you more about that. So I I also thought about that. But there are just just to let you know that after you make this choice, don't think that okay, I don't have to have any more choices. Actually, the path is quite wide. But I finally chose psychiatry. So I thought that okay, I chose psychiatry. Finally, I don't have to make any other more important decisions. But that's actually I found completely untrue because once you go into psychiatry. There are also another 80 doors I could have chosen. And this is something that truly surprised me, even like I went into psychiatry. And that is to say, because we think of physical health, there are so many aspects. You can be a respirologist, we can be a cardiologist, right? You can study any part of your body and become a specialist. So that's why there are so many specialties. But what about mental health in a very similar way? Once you go into psychiatry, there are psychiatrists specialized in giving um, biological types of treatments. There are psychiatrists who are more interested in psychological types of treatments. And there are many, many ways to help people with mental uh, problems. So just to give you an idea, once you actually choose psychiatry, you will actually, because we have this discussion all the time, in psychiatry, you have to go five years of further training. So five years of residency is actually longer than if you go to the States. If you go to the States, you, you, you can become a psychiatrist in four years. So Canada, we actually have a five-year system. So you have four years of medical school plus five years of uh, residency. But the good news is you get you know paid in residency. So you're already working. But because psychiatry is pretty big, you have to understand child psychiatry, how children think. You have to go geriatric psychiatry, how the elderly people think. Um, and then you can go through the different kinds of rotations in psychiatry. So this is just to give you the breadth of psychiatry. Um, I heard earlier someone mentioned cultural competence, I think the last talk. And maybe I'll just kind of wrap up here. I think facing psychiatry these days, a couple of issues. I think number one is stigma in the Chinese community we face. But from a mental health point of view, the other one is about cultural competence. So cultural competence about the importance of Chinese medicine. I heard that you know Dr. Chow was mentioning that because we are, have Chinese culture. And if you think about it, culture shapes everything we do, foods we eat that can interact with medicine, the actual Chinese medicine we take can interact with it, but also Chinese ways of thinking, Chinese ways of parenting also affect the way we think and feel, can also affect how mental illness both become mental illness and also present themselves, their experience and treatment too. So um, I think uh, some of you might have heard some earlier talks about the importance then of paying attention to culture um, in the field of medicine, cultural competence is important. And this is especially so in psychology and psychiatry as well. So I think that uh, this story, I hope to, I'm gonna wrap it up now because I know I'm taking maybe too much time. But number one is sometimes you don't have to have exactly like your career path in mind because, you know, this is like today's talk, Hong Hong Chuk Chong Yun. So I think many paths, you might think this is not exactly, I'm not sure, but I think if you uh, 
sometimes you have a passion, you know, you go for it. Other times, like once you develop, um, once you get into the field, you can develop a passion and interest for it if you have an open mind. And so there are no wrong paths. So think about it as there are no wrong doors. There are just many, many doors of opportunities. And even when you think, okay, that's the final one, I'm trapped. <laughs> maybe your parents force you, maybe certain university choices, may, may, you may end up with, with being placed in a certain career. Um, you don't ever have to give up hope because once you open the door, there are many, many other doors to open. So this is a time of opportunity of opening doors and ex exploring different things that you're interested in. And you don't ever have to feel you're boxed in because there's always more to discover. So perhaps I will leave it there. I'm sure that might be time for questions after maybe Dr. Lee's presentation. Thank you, Kenneth. So next we have Dr. Chen. While Dr. Chen is coming up, just want to acknowledge, uh, we're very fortunate to have Dr. Fong in our, uh, in our university. He's one of the leaders in, uh, in the field of uh, cultural competence and also multicultural psychiatry because he act, uh, most of our Chinese patients, we try to refer to him uh, at the Toronto Western Hospital and he really leads the group and uh, enables to help uh, many of our immigrants who come to us who can't speak English. So thank you to him. So next we 